Hi there, my name is Kisiwa and you're welcome to my channel. If you're new here, do also click on the subscribe button and the notification bell to get every video I drop on this channel. If you're an OG, you're welcome back to the channel. So today, I'm going to share with you the general documents or the documents you need if you're thinking of furthering your education abroad or if you're thinking of a scholarship opportunity to fund your studies abroad. So if you're ready, let's get into the video. of pursuing a bachelor's degree master's degree or a phd in another country or you're looking for a scholarship opportunity to fund your education abroad then so i'm here to share with you the documents you need if you fall within any of these categories the first document you need is a transcript or um, final high school result so if you want to pursue a bachelor's degree then you should have your final high school result and if you want to do your master's or phd then you should have your transcripts ready also you will need a certificate now a certificate is just to um, inform the institution you are applying to that you have gone through a number of studies and then you now qualify to further your education you also okay. need a test score so a test score is usually um, an exam you have to write and you have to meet a particular score to be accepted into a particular program usually the test score is not for all the programs and it's for just masters and then phd students and it depends on the program as well so i know of mba and some law programs and then also if you're going to do um, a tech related program or it related program i know you will be required to provide either a gre or a gmat however if you're a high school graduate then you wouldn't need a test score. you will also need to prove that you can express yourself in the language of the program you're going to study in so for example if you want to do a master's degree in english then you should have a document which states or which proves that you can speak understand and write the english language now improving that you can express yourself in this language you should have a certificate which will prove it and there are a number of of, of exams that you can take for example you can write IELTS, Duolingo, SAT, ACT to prove that you can really express yourself in English however if you were taught in English in your previous studies then you can request for an English proficiency certificate or letter from your previous university to replace the English test score or English test certificate again you should also have a financial document that will prove that you'll be able to fund yourself or take care of yourself for a period of one year in the other country you are moving in, in you are moving into okay so this document comes in the form of a bank statement now in the bank statement you should have an amount of money that can take care of you in one year of your studies abroad okay and if you have any other documents that can prove or that can replace a bank statement then you can present it as well it is also advisable for you to have an international passport if you're thinking of studying abroad okay so an international passport is just to prove that you are an international student basically so you should have an international passport ready and also if you want me to do a video on how to apply for an international passport in ghana then let me help you let me be of help to you if you want me to do a video on that like drop it in the comment section and then i'll i'll get back to you okay then also you need a reference letter so there are two types of reference letter we have the academic reference okay so the academic reference is a reference coming from your tutor who has taught you in your previous um, studies so in this letter your tutor or your lecturer is to give good remarks about you and all that now the other type of reference letter is a professional reference so this one comes from your employer it can be from your supervisor or from your head of department and it will state that you have worked with a company for a number of years and then you are 
you have the perfect qualities okay so one comes from your previous university and then the other one comes from either your current or previous employer now if you are pursuing a bachelor's degree you don't need a professional reference you may you may need um, an academic reference but you wouldn't need a professional reference so talking about professional reference you also need a cv or a resume so some countries will prefer a particular format that you should present your cv in and i know that most of the european schools will prefer an europass cv so if you want me to do um, oh, a step-by-step -step process in getting or writing an Europass CV, let me know in the comment section and then I'll go back to you on that. Then the Canadians also have a format in writing their CV. So if a particular type of CV was not mentioned, you can verify from the school which type or which format you should present your CV in. Uh, the next document we are going to talk about is one of the documents that can if well written or if well structured can give you about 75 percent guarantee that you will be admitted so this document is an SOP that statement of purpose or a personal statement or a motivational letter or a personal essay so it's the same thing I'm talking about but comes in different names okay so if you have a good motivational letter or SOP it will guarantee you like 85% chance of you being admitted into university so you pay particular attention to your SOP or motivational letter or personal statement or personal lastly if you're going to do your PhD or some master master degree programs you will be required to present an essay or a proposal so this proposal is a research proposal so you have to be working towards a particular research interest or a particular topic you're interested in you have to get um, your proposal down and then you have to add it as part of the documents you need to um, apply for a PhD program or degree or some master degree okay, guys. so these are basically all the documents you need and other documents I've mentioned here does not cut across at all levels it depends on the program you're going to do and it depends on the level of um, degree you are going to pursue so if you have any question regarding this particular um, video I've dropped today drop it in the comment section and then I'll get back to you and if you have watched this video so thus far thank you so much um, give me a thumbs up okay and then let me know if I'm doing well <laughs> let me know if I'm doing well thank you so much and then see you in my next video it's a bye for now <laughs>